this meeting to order. Welcome to the March 4th, 2024 meeting of the Arts and Public Places Committee. Um, Krista, would you take roll, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, committee member as a Dan is absent. Uh, committee member Faulkner here. Uh, committee member Nathanson is absent. Committee member Puentes here, present. And committee member Stewart. A vice chair keeper present and chair Bumgarner present. I let the record reflect that all committee members are present, with the exception of committee member Azadirian and Nathanson and Stewart. Okay, well, we're going to start with public comments. This is a time when any person who is visiting um, from the public would like to make a statement or a question um, that is outside the agenda that we're looking at later today, you could, you will be called on for comment on those specific agenda items when they call, but you are allowed three minutes. If there's anyone that would like to make public comment, I call on them now. Nope. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say. <laughs> All right. I'm going to listen. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Great. Well, seeing that there's no hands raised, we'll move on to um, committee discussion in order. Um, Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I scooped. I'm on a bank. So, um, then we'll move to the minutes. Right? There's an older one. Right? No, I just okay. I have the one you sent me, but I had it was back to back. Okay. <laughs> saving paper. <laughs> um, we're looking at minutes. One set of minutes has been distributed for review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? That was from the November 6th meeting back in the last year. If none, then the minutes are approved as submitted. And we'll now move on to scheduled items. We are moving first to 5.1, the Fifth Street Parking Garage Mural Project, Common Ground, and Chad Hedge with Santa Rosa Parking will present the art proposal for a community improvement and art project inside the Fifth Street Parking Garage. The Parking Department has approved the improvement project and location for the public art. The recommended action is approval of the artwork design. So we can start with the presentation. Good, right there. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chad Hedge. I am the parking division manager here at the city of Santa Rosa. Uh, with me today, I have Larkin O'Leary, who's the CEO and co-founder of Common Ground Society. And then uh, I know her first name, Snow, Simone Bernard. <laughs> She's also with Common Ground Society. She's an AmeriCorps member working with that group. So um, I'm going to let, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a history of how I got here today and then, and then how, and then I'm going to let Larkin and Simone kind of talk about their group. But in the past uh, year, six months or so, right, I've been trying to put a lot of focus into a garage. Uh, the friendliness, the, 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 the warmness of our garages, and that includes uh, additional staff going through patrol and answering questions, helping people in the garages, uh, increased in lighting. Um, and, and next, we're kind of working on more community-based art projects uh, that are hopefully we can work through with different nonprofit groups throughout uh, Santa Rosa. I've met quite a few people in, in the past few months through the different organizations out so Santa, uh, Santa Rosa, the, the, the County Museum folks, Larkin and her folks. And the idea that we have is to do a mural in garage three, <laughs> let's talk about this, which is on third street. So garage three is the garage that's just behind the Russian River lot, a parking lot uh, I'm right there. So before I talk about how we're gonna get this done, maybe I'll let uh, Larkin and someone talk about how important their, their group is. 
Sure. So um, we're a local nonprofit. I never intended to found a nonprofit, um, but there was just a great need um, in our community. So we do two things. Um, I'm local, born and raised Sonoma County, Santa Rosa. Um, I was a teacher for almost, I've been a teacher for almost 20 years and about uh, 10 years ago, I had a son who was born with Down syndrome, hearing loss, and just a lot of medical issues. Um, I ended up having to resign my teaching position but what happened because of all of that was this group that was formed started with 30 people who had kids with any sort of disability, medical complexity, any sort of unique need. Um, we now are at over a thousand, a thousand nineteen. Because I was asked this morning, how many are in the group? Um, local Sonoma County families who don't fit the mold of you know your typical experience having a child with any sort of unique need. And so uh, we come together, what started as donuts in discussion. We now have 10 different touch points each month. Um, <clears throat> family meetups, which this would probably be one of our family meetups, bringing people in. Um, Latinx family meetups. We do targeted meetups for our moms, our dads, our siblings, anyone who is part of this community, um, reminding them that there is a place that they belong just as they are. We also, um, I believe that our disability community is never going to fully be um, accepted and supported unless we understand how to support them and uh, what I've been learning from my son. Um, so we do presentations in the community. What started as a simple presentation to my son's preschool, Press Democrat came. All my teacher friends, they came and exploited me <laughs> and they made me go in their classrooms um, and from that, uh, we started doing whole school assemblies, and since then, we've hit over 65,000 students in Sonoma, Napa, Marin. Uh, we've been flown up to, we're going up to Oregon. Uh, we've been, we're going down to San Diego on Wednesday. They've named a conference after our nonprofit. It's called Be the One, which is one of our taglines. Um, just reminding people to uh, just say hi and follow their lead, right? We don't have, we're as humans scared of what we don't know and don't understand. And so we give people the tools to be able to push past those feelings of discomfort <coughs> and fear and just say hi. And um, that's all we do. That's, it. <laughs> that's all we do. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. Uh, so anything to add or was that everything? That's everything okay. on my part. Really. Okay, so uh, as part of the group, so Larkin and I both are in uh, Leadership Santa Rosa, right? So in one of our meetings, we're having, I've met a lot of amazing people and, we, and, and we're all talking about different ideas we can make uh, downtown or, or Railroad Square more inviting, more family friendly. And then she started talking about her group. And this, I think anybody who just heard her explanation of her group, and she talked about how hard it is for her group specifically to find a space where they can just have fun with art and not have to worry anything. And then, of course, I, the first thing I thought was I've got a giant concrete structure that nobody can hurt no matter what they do. <laughs> so, um, it, it, and so this is very, very small. And I'm coming, I'm coming to the committee today just to kind of pitch my idea and, and kind of point out why I think it'd be great for her group and the community. But also, big picture, if this works, which I'm pretty certain it will, the things I can do going forward with all my other, I've got five garages and seven lots that, that could be could be prettier. There are murals already designed uh, in different structures and they're all amazing. Um, I just kind of want to do more. Uh, maybe you have rotating uh, art, maybe you have rotating exhibits, maybe you have uh, a lighting and coordinating with the different uh, uh, um, months. Just kind of be a community space as opposed to just a parking space. So what we came up with, um, if you want to go to the next slide, so this, once again, this is the 5th Street Garage, uh, Garage 3. So the wall you're looking at right now is, uh, uh, if I'm standing on, if I'm standing on 3rd uh, Street and I'm looking at the garage, it's the west, the west facing wall. Right? It's a little half wall right there. Uh, we have nothing on the wall right now except white paint. So the idea is that we can let we have the ability with my staff that we can kind of close off a section of that garage on the entrance. They'd have free reign and be safe. There'd be nothing for anybody to worry about. They can just kind of have a day, do an art project there. And then that was the actual design that Common Ground Society came up with, the hello belonging in the, in the bubble letters. And then uh, there's more, we're correct. And our, our tagline is it starts with hello, ends with belonging. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, the great thing I think about this is, is 
it's not a it's not a giant mural. It's not something that's going to take days or weeks or months to even complete. It's going to be something that these folks, this group, can, can take a lot of pride in. They can see it. Uh, we came up with the discussion together, Common Ground Society and, and uh, parking that we can kind of help maintain it because there's a tendency for things to be tagged in the garages, uh, which, which happens anywhere and everywhere. Um, and then it's a safe space, and anytime somebody comes in, they'll see something. So to me, it was just something small we can kind of address quickly. Um, Common Ground Society is going to fund the project uh, as far as paint and brushes and things like that. And then my staff would just maybe do a little bit of pre pre work, set up some barricades, some cones, and assist during the day of the uh, of the painting. So I think that's all we have. Well, and then in the inside of the hello, what our plan was to have our community come out because we don't just do like we have meetups that are full community meetups where we're, we want people who have neurotypical children to bring their kids to play with our kids that have disabilities so that we can go to a park and people aren't staring at us. Right. So we can like it be part of our community. And so. In the hello, um, we would have people putting their handprints um, in the hello for hi. <laughs> and then um, in the belonging, we would have people writing words or drawing little pictures of what belonging means to them. Um, and so much like, and that's why we showed the picture of the quilt. That was sort of the same thing we did uh, for our one year uh, Be the One anniversary. Um, we gave each person a quilt square and they decorated it and we put it together and it's this most beautiful quilt and I couldn't wait to have an office to hang it in and now we do so that's exciting too. Okay. Um, yeah so we chose that location. Bella and I visited Chad um, one afternoon and we toured a couple different um, garages. We chose this area one for accessibility. We wanted it to be flat ground um, open space um, for our mobility challenged folks, um, as well as well lit. Um, we didn't want a huge wall area because this is um, our first time doing a mural project like this. So we wanted to kind of just do a smaller area, especially lower to the ground for those who are smaller. Um, and we thought this was just the best area to be able to uh, corner off and not be uh, too much in the way and disrupt traffic. I think, I think Andy, the last thing I'd like to add is, and I think I've said it already, but I have to say it one more time. This is just a small, um, a small thing that I think we can accomplish now with, with a very small lift and incorporate some of these community, these community, these community groups, um, assuming it's going to work out just fine. If, if the approval is given, I think that it can open the door to show how, how simple it could be to build these relationships with these organizations, do little small art projects like this, uh, make an impact on the garages, and then just like with her group or anybody else, they'll come downtown, they'll see this on the garage, they'll feel like they're a part of it, they'll want to spend more time downtown, they'll want to walk around and, and, and spend, spend more time, and, and I think it's a small thing we can do to kind of set us in the right direction. Yeah, our community would love to visit it yeah. as well. Yeah, and then I spoke with different um, groups about it, uh, uh, the, the other ideas I have coming up. So this is just the first one. So thank you all for listening yeah. to me and thank you both for coming in here. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. having us. Good. Thanks for presenting. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a time for com um, questions, not, not comments, not reflections, but questions to them for the committee. You guys want to ask any questions? Go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, my question was regarding the letters. You were stating that you were going to um, place text and um, probably handprints, graphics, or something within those letters. I mean, they don't seem that big. I'm just curious to know, like, for instance, the H, what is the width of um, one side of the H to, uh, you know, be placing? It doesn't seem that big to hold mm -hmm. a handprint and um, text that would be readable unless you were you know, a foot away from it. Yeah, so this is just a rough mock-up that we have, um, definitely with, uh, you know, talking with people and more input, we can change um, just the, the font itself. Um, the way I was thinking about putting this font up there is projecting it um, from a projector that we have at the office and then tracing it with chalk mm -hmm. um, at first just to get a layout mm -hmm. and then painting over it just to make clean lines. Um, and so it was just a rough uh, mock-up just to get a, an idea of spacing. So definitely uh, moving forward with more drafts that I will look into the width and just making sure that things can fit inside of the letters. So thank you. Okay. The wall itself is about hip height. For, for me and their letters will go from the top 
to the bottom. So they'll be a lot bigger in, in real life than what they look on that screen. Okay. Other questions? Hi, um, I'm Jeff Nathanson from the museum. Hi. Hi. Uh, have you looked at other uh, public art text projects just to get a, a sense of what uh, uh, artists have done around the Bay Area? Because uh, I'm familiar with quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. So have you looked at them just to, you know, in, in terms of looking at font and impact and things mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, I've been doing some research in the past few weeks just to see what's out there and just comparing and contrasting of what we can do differently or the same as well. Yeah, great. Other question? How, how are the cars interacting with this space? Like if I went in with my family to see it, would there be cars parked in front of it? So, yes. So uh, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look farther off to, to your right, mm -hmm. that's actually the entrance of the garage. Okay. Right. Um, a majority of the parking in this area that you see right here is, is uh, ADA spaces. Okay. So, so not the majority of the time, right. Majority of the time, those spaces are empty because folks want to go to the first, first or the second, okay. second floor and they also want to be close to the elevator. Right. Okay, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. I would think it'd be sort of sad if you couldn't see it. You know? That yeah. was one of our main concerns. Yeah, that yeah. totally makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I love your um, concept of uh, the pillow and belonging, and I am curious if there's going to be something that's going to maybe bring more attention to your idea. Because I, I don't, I'm not sure that if I saw hello belonging, I would get it. Sure. Is there going to be something that's going to say maybe common ground or a little? Yeah, I think our, what we, on the corner there, there's a picture. Yeah, so it's hard to see in this mock-up. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, what? I, um, <laughs> but, um, I didn't want it at the, at the end after belonging. I didn't want to take up too much space. I wanted the emphasis to be hello belonging. And then as you got closer, you see more detail. But um, at the end of it, it'll say painted by families of common ground society, as well as have a QR code on okay. our website. Great, because yeah. I would love for you know people to get the concept. Absolutely. Yeah. Say hello. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's okay to say hello. It's a good thing to say hello. And yeah, we definitely so wanted um, community members to be able to see and be like, oh, who painted this and be able to look right. us up. And especially if they didn't know who we are and they needed our support, they can find us easily. Right, right. Great. So I heard that you toured around a couple garages and picked this location. What was your criteria or what helped you make a decision on this location? Yeah, so we, we toured a couple. Um, I definitely liked the lighting in this one was best. Um, I just felt like it would be easiest to see in there as well as flat surface, um, as well as uh, I thought it would be easiest to um, just corner this off so that we ha can have um, a safe space for our community because we have members of all sorts of unique needs and we didn't want um, to have people feel like they couldn't participate on certain, we didn't want you know, it to be slanted um, and as well as have ADA parking nearby for those who needed it. Nice. I wanted to ask too, like, um, are you Chad? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're part of the city, right? You said my garage, but you're talking like you're in charge of this. In the yes. City. Yes. yes. I just want to make sure that that's right. your thing. Is this? Do you have any bandwidth or ability to circulate images of this completed? You know, to the community. Can you get? Will you have people that will be able to? You know, get it larger so people know what's happening here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we have the ability internally. Uh, to post these pictures on the parking, the parking website, which is attached to the city's website, uh, we can work with Ciro, who can also get that stuff out. Uh, I, I'm assuming that a lot of the the different organizations downtown would probably want to post some of these pictures as well. Uh, we have a fairly large we'll social well. media yeah. Um, yeah. following. Yeah. We don't want this to be done in a vacuum. We we want to post and. and have them brag about this as much as they possibly can. Right. So I'm saying you have ownership in the, even the whole project because I see you like this is a, the beginning and you're going to mm -hmm. move on. So you, yeah, you could, you'd be open to ideas about like making postcards or yes. things that, you know, that would start generating a public and a community response to this yes. project. And yes. I, yeah. yeah I, I think one thing to mention is that the, uh, the reason I'm so excited about this project and think that it's a really good start is because of the low cost to do all this stuff yeah. that with, with materials or relationships we already have 
Um, I think it can definitely open up the doors to other things within our, our, our facilities and our garages, but me, my staff, and uh, uh, Larkin and her staff, we're going we're gonna to push this as much as we can and brag about it yeah. as much as we can. I like to brag. It's really great. Uh, question I had was, was there any thought to use kind of the more vertical pillars that you have here instead of the horizontal, um, like you said, their hip height? I was just thinking that the vertical pillars might have more opportunity for um, down. Yeah, if, if you're able to put like more handprints up there, that could, again, point people in the direction to say that there is artwork down here. For like you it starts at. with, it starts with right there and then hello on the big pillar and ends oh, with just a, a color, longing. Just a color and handprint. She's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, something to connect it or just so that there's more attention to this area. Um, yeah. I just don't, yeah, if there are cars parked there, I, I, I would be concerned about um not being able to see it. So yeah. I wonder if there was yeah. any idea that you guys thought of. Um, to be honest with you, I just wanted to present it to the committee. And if the committee says we like it, we'll adjust our design in any way that, that, that fits. There's no reason why we didn't include those those pillars uh, as far as parking's concerned. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys didn't include them for safety concerns, but. No, I yeah. I was mainly focusing on the wall. And so I think that's a great idea to incorporate, the, incorporate that as well. Yeah. We're so. open. Any more questions? Okay. Any, I now ask for public comment. This is only in person, right? There's no Zooming. Yeah. Any comments? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Like not participating. Okay. Given that there's none, we're going to move on to any more discussion about this amongst ourselves um, or anything else anyone would want to say or. I no? think it's great, Chad, yeah. that you want to do this for parking garages you know, add light and color and because I personally, as a woman, find parking garages to be one of the creepiest places to go yeah. to by myself. So I applaud yeah. your efforts. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, thank you. Uh -huh. um, reach out to me at any time. We'll see what you talk about. So you don't feel creepy in the garage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to echo Devil's comment. Um, I, I often park in parking garages because of the security and knowing that there's lit, you know, that they are lit and that it's a safe place for me to walk to. Um, I used to live in Tacoma, Washington, and know that there was a great opportunity for the city's parking garages to partner with local artists. And so I'm very happy to see more of this happening in Santa Rosa. So I applaud you for having an open vision about this. And I would love to pass on some things that I found was very uh, engaging about that community. Yeah, please. Um, there was a yeah, great opportunity for rotating artwork. So I hope that you guys stay nimble and open to new ideas. Yeah, perfect, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this is great too, and Chad, you and I have spoken about it, and uh, there are so many good examples, like not only in Tacoma, but other places. I also think uh, there is really good examples of how vertical support pillars or, or, or columns have been incorporated into public art projects in the East Bay. And uh, I think it was a really smart yeah. comment because when something is down low, it is very hard to see, but it's the verticality, if you've got that architecture to work with, will really help uh, draw the eye and, and, and have that visibility that the lower uh, portion just, it might disappear to a lot of viewers. Yeah. yeah. Good to know. I'll just add that um, I personally am a visual art specialist, like K to 12 like that. And I, I think there's a lot of considerations when you're doing a group art project and I would totally offer myself as a volunteer or just to well, thank have you. a yeah, that would about wonderful. coordinating people and paint. And mm -hmm. it's like, a, it can be a really um, exponential equation. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's really great too. I think yeah. it's nothing more invigorating, but really well prepared and materials prepared correctly. It's really can succeed. So yeah. I love that it's an activity. Thank you. I would love that help and input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you my card. Yes, thank you. And really glad to hear that the city wants to be involved in, you know, graffiti abatement or helping to make sure that these these pieces stay community engagement um, focused. Yeah, and, and uh, off topic a little bit, but the, the city is um, uh, parking. Where I, I just want to make sure that that I'm speaking for parking. I, I went through all the proper channels to get to this point. I, I didn't skirt anybody or anything, but um, I do know that the city has put in a lot of effort 
to revitalize the downtown, revitalize the Royal Square area. Parking, that we're, we're putting in effort every day to try to make the garages cleaner, uh, upgrade the lighting system, have more staff out there. Uh, they're, they're, they're small steps, and I do believe they're making a dent in it, but, but any help, phone calls, conversations, emails I can get to kind of help me understand what, what the additional issues could be, that's, that's what we're here for. Great, thanks. Um, so, um, thanks. Were any more comments? No? Okay. okay. Um, we'll move on. Um, now, does anyone wish to make a motion to approve this design? I'll make a motion. Uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the, uh, approve the artwork design for artwork that would improve the 5th Street parking garage uh, done by... Common ground. Common ground Society and Partners and Community Partners, uh, and look forward to a, you know, a more input between our our staff, or our staff and your um, group. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Now we have a motion. We can discuss it. Any other kinds of comments around discussing? Have we said it all? I'm just curious. Will we get another? Um, chance to review because I know this was a pretty rough draft of what they were planning right. to do. Do you have any? Do you know? Um, I don't think so because they they won't have a design of what will actually be inside of the bubble letters. So they wanted to approval on this design to move forward with doing the bubble letters and the inside part would be. Yeah, I could I could work on just you know what we think would be in there for sure. Well, and I think using some of the designs from the quilts, that was the purpose of the quilt was showing, you know, uh, how Common Ground Society has created belonging for you. So we could just put some of those designs in the belonging and, and yep. prints in the hello. Mm -hmm. You wanted to come back? To well, the, to the yeah, that would mean that you would come back and present again. Oh. <laughs> which I think <laughs> was clear about how it evolves. <laughs> no. No. Um, which I okay. don't feel is entirely necessary. No, I don't but either. it's not. Right. Okay. But I, I would love to work with you. I mean, if you're working with us on this, I feel like That's it's going to be a continued yeah, conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, totally. Perfect. Yeah. And thank you for Can our community get a reminder for the timeline for, uh, I'm not sure if there was yeah, detailed. There, the only detail was um, once it's approved, they feel like it will only take, it will be a one day's worth activity and they don't have that date on the calendar yet. Okay. But when there is a date, we can communicate it to the committee. Right. Yeah. Maybe we can support it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd yeah, be cool. We, we can come out and be volunteers. Yes. Great. Yeah. So love that. So yes. I'll Let love us know. We, we like these kind of things. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've discussed it. Um, anyone else want to make any discussion? <clears throat> Details? Okay. So it's the motion's on the table uh, to approve. If there's no further discussion, then Crystal, could we, um, would you report the uh, record the vote? Absolutely. Uh, committee member as Darian is absent still. Committee member Faulkner. I approve it. Aye. Uh, committee member Nathanson. Aye. Aye. Uh, committee member Puentes. Aye. Committee member Stewart is absent. Uh, Vice Chair Kiefer. Aye. Chair Bumgarner. Um, yes. Uh, let the record reflect. We have one, two, three, four, five ayes and two absences for that vote. Thank you. Five, five is a quorum, right? We have a quorum? Just mm -hmm. double Yeah, we have a quorum. Yeah, we already okay. stepped Just it. Yes. <laughs> yes, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that was great. Um, we're going to move on now to the next agenda item. You guys are free to move. Thank on. you so much. Thank it was you. nice to hear you. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, Next thing is the Planning and Economic Development Department is going to do some introductions. Uh, staff will inter oh, good. I'll be in touch. Perfect. The staff will in introduce Planning and Economic Development Director Gabe Osborne and Administrative Service Officer Serena now Lino. Lino. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. Check that earlier. It's called. It okay. So um, the recommended action on this is information only. So Jessica, you can go ahead with the introduction. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So in this sort of period that we've been in for the last couple months, um, myself and Bryce have been working closely with Gabe, Serena, and Jill here, and we just thought it would be nice to do some introductions. And um, so, yeah, take it away. 
<laughs> Would you like to go first? <laughs> I'm happy to go first. Um, I'm Jill Scott. I'm the city's real estate manager, but also doing a, um, an acting role as the deputy director of economic development for right now. Right. Okay. Oh, me. Okay. Um, Serena Lino. I'm the administrative services officer for the department, and um, I'm uh, mostly responsible for the budget and HR for the department, but um, I oversee all of the administration division and uh, anything process oriented. So I've been helping Jessica uh, navigate um, kind of the inner workings of the city as we keep the um, our program moving forward, special events moving forward. So just being that um, advisor of sorts to help guide the program forward. So, um, and I have a long history with Rec and Parks in the past, so it's a, I like to be able to support the program. <laughs> okay. And I'm Gabe Osborne. I'm the Director of Planning and Economic Development. Um, so it's really good to spend some time with the Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. Um, just really where the department is at this point, as you can see, there, there's a lot of vacancies that we're filling. People are in temporary roles. And I, I have to give a big kudos to Jessica and Bryce. Um, they, they've done an amazing job carrying the program for us. Yeah, so I'm incredibly impressed at their expertise, their passion, and I'm really happy to be part of the team. Um, just visions moving forward. I think that that's an important piece. So art is in a department that has core sets of responsibilities that aren't art, right? Economic development, one can say that's, that's partially um, art. Um, but when you look at the regular planning and building functions, that's the vast majority of the time the department spends. So what I'll be doing is intentionally looking for ways to prop the art program up. It's a very small but mighty team, but it's incredibly important to the community and the culture of Santa Rosa. And I think as we move forward, what we'll be looking at is how do we build off of some great things that we've, did, we've done? So how do we promote art? How do we make art a destination? How do we theme around art? and murals, for example. And I think they're great ideas from Chad, but how do we take that to the next step? Because all of a sudden we're creating a theme with that mural in the garage and how do we continue that activity going? And how do we partner with the community to make that happen? So I will be coming back to the committees for creative ideas on how we can be better to prop the art program up. And what does the community wanna see? How can we present it? Um, what have we, what, how can we do something different than we haven't done in the past? Um, because we have a lot of tools at our disposal. We say it's Bryce and Jessica, but it's part of a bigger organism that is planning and academic development. And that team does some pretty amazing things that they can shift towards the art program. So we will we, we'll be looking for opportunities to do that in the future. You'll see my face here more often. I think it's important to support the team. Um, and I have a passion for it myself. Um, so look forward to for great things to come. Else you want to say? Um, thank you, Gabe. Yeah, thanks for it's nice to meet you. Uh, let me see, there's a kind of a so, um, is there any public comment? <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're getting more. Usually, that's not enough. I have to say, seeing that we are moving on, um, we're going to move on to any questions. Again, we're starting with questions from our committee. Any questions or comments from you for the folks that are here? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I am um, curious about, because uh, Jessica is an interim person and is a contractor as opposed to an employee, what kind of timeline do you see for uh, hopefully hiring Jessica on a full-time basis to be uh, the leader of the committee and or and or how, how do you see this moving forward because we feel I personally I'll speak for myself feel a little stalled out here mm -hmm. yeah. and understandably so I think with some of the vacancies that we've had it's it's occurring in a few areas in the department so we're really trying to right the ship and part of that is permanently filling the roles right. um, so the arts and culture manager position that is going out we're working with our HR department mm -hmm. to permanently fill that um, what we're trying to do as well is to figure out long term to provide a solid program moving forward, what's the appropriate number of full time employees. Um, I think uh, Jessica and Bryce have done a fabulous job as contract employees, but I would love to bring those resources in house to formally make it part of the team and to really solidify that moving forward. Right. Um, of course, anytime there's a position, then it's a budgetary request. And as we go through a flat budget, it becomes a bit more challenging to do that. But what we're doing, um, sort of strategizing across the department to figure out how we can provide more resources, long term permanent positions to the department. 
um, in the division, I should say. But the first step is to fill that position um, with the number of vacancies citywide. It takes a little longer than we would like to fill some of these roles just because it's impacting our HR department. Um, but we are actively pursuing that recruitment. So that will be the first step, and then we'll go from there. Do you see that happening in the next couple of months or this year? Or? That's that's the goal. Uh, Gabe alluded to it, but our HR department is um, also understaffed themselves. And so we are, it's a little bit slow moving right now, but we're hoping that it's going to be picking up in the next couple of weeks to get um, these recruitments out. So um, uh this position is one of 11 that we have in the department. Um, so we're just going through the motions. So it does take a little bit of time, but at the very least, we'll get the position open for recruitment. And then typically we say it can take two to three months from start to finish, getting a person starting on their first day. It, it can take about that much time to go through each step of the process. So from opening the position to actually hiring the person till day, to day one it can take two to three months yeah okay. but our goal is um to do so well before the end of the fiscal year so it will not go beyond july 1st um is the goal okay mm -hmm. sure it's good to know. is um is the position been rewritten at all or changed in its as you are getting ready to list it have um, back to what Tara did. Yeah, so uh, we uh, anytime we have a vacancy, we always take a, a look at it. Um, in this case, uh, uh, we didn't make too many changes to it because it was a relatively new version of it because Tara was reclassified into that position. So the position itself was studied not too long ago. However, it's sidebar but related, the city is going through a large-scale classification and compensation study where every miscellaneous position in the city is currently being studied. So there may be something that comes through that, but for the purposes of the recruitment, uh, we won't be making any changes. So um, it is a new recruitment, though, for this position because Tara was in it for so long, so there wasn't actually an existing job announcement for it. So we, we have had to start from scratch to create that one, but um, but that's okay. We're, we're making it work. <laughs> and we'll add one of the organizational pieces that we're, we're trying to figure out at this point is, is Tara wore quite a few hats mm -hmm. um, on the art side, but also on the economic de development side as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're trying to do is to have that position solely focused on art and to not necessarily be distracted by other economic development components. Um, Any time you do that, it becomes the start and stop issues. It, it's harder to focus and things just take longer. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now we're working on that. That's Jill and I are, are talking a lot about what that economic development team needs to look like as far as small business support, big business attraction, retention, uh, but we don't want the art program to suffer because of that. So we're trying to make sure that the resources are equally distributed between the, the two clearly defined programs. I feel like, um, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and it also concerns me that you would separate that from the finance because when you're like developing relationships with artists and you're creating opportunities and dreaming and you don't have a direct tie in to where the money's coming from and maybe even a, a say. So I, I just would offer a comment on that that I, I would hope that we would keep that person at the table in the, the art. I'm telling you what I want your job to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's important to, to be able to have that leverage in a sense on behalf. I, I feel like the person out of the community that's working with, yeah, the art on the walls that, I mean, the art is great, but the, it's about the people that are making it and the, what's happening at this time. And it's a recording of what happened at this time um, and who we were, Santa Rosa at this time. We want that to reflect our city, but if the person is not able to, in a sense, really support that and go for what they really want or, or advocate for it. So that's what I'm concerned about it. If, if it's too separated out and it's like, you're just gonna do the art. And I know I, know I don't know everything, but I was putting it out there that I, I really do want that person at the table. Yeah, and I hope it would be Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> and to dovetail off of Anne's comment, I'm, I'm, I'm just aware of how integral Tara's role was with the implementation of events and through the permitting process and having that understanding in one position made for events to happen so smoothly or, or to, you know, be able to talk about what the process is. And I really think that that needs to be embedded in this, this role going forward. So, um, and I just wonder whether 
the vision is for this role to stay within economic development or if there's any thought about going back to parks and rec or um, I think it really makes a lot of sense to stay within economic development. So I just wonder what the organizational thought is. So I think uh, two points there. The first one, incredibly important, and we will not be decoupling events from art. Uh, mm -hmm. They work together <laughs> well. So that would be the team's core focus. And really when I say separate them out, um, the way the planning and economic development department works is nothing really separates out. It, it has to all work together for the city to function correctly and for us to implement the goals we wanna see. Um, what we need to sort of focus on though is really because when things get busy and you're short staffed, people move to the hot issue. And sometimes that's de detrimental to various programs because you're constantly moving to something that isn't that. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is shelter that a little bit, um, really purely from an hour dedication standpoint. Um, but I think some of those discussions about, I've heard a lot of art, well, that's small business support because when you put art on buildings, you're actually supporting small businesses. That's absolutely correct, you are. And so how do you work small business? Now, when you look at big business attraction retention, and I, I constantly use the Amazon distribution center, um, that's a different skill set, right? That, that, that's a, a different team member that works with that. But when you deal with the smaller community events, the art, the small business support, then it starts intertwining itself and it dovetails together. So we are not decoupling that. That's not the goal, as I think it's really critical um, for that sort of community element to keep those together. Okay. And, and I'd like to just add my reinforcement to that concept, I chill. <laughs> um, the the uh, art and culture programs I've seen in other cities, and I think it was this way in Santa Rosa also prior to six years ago or whenever uh, arts and culture was moved over to economic development. But when you see those programs, that those departments in recreation and parks, there is a really different emphasis and a really different understanding about the impact that the arts make. And mm -hmm. having worked on um, multiple arts and economic uh, impact studies um, here and on the East Coast, it's remarkable when you really look into the numbers and the impact that the arts have on economic development. And I think it's, a, it's just a, a healthier way for a community to look at how the money flows and what impact it's having, especially when artists are also considered as small businesses. Just to confirm, I will not be proposing that yeah. arts is pulled out of planning and <laughs> <laughs> And that's great, thank you. Yeah, and let's not forget the nonprofit arts organizations too. We all, yes. We all work hard. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. That's how you really yeah. appreciate you coming in to meet us. And yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Your faces um, and as I mentioned, you will see us here more often. Good. That would be great. <laughs> Good. Great. Um, so I don't think there's anything else to do with that, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's great. No vote. Thank no. you. Just a big, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How are you, Jeff? Good. How are you, Jill? Good. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Already did it. Already did it. Okay. Already did it. Yep. Uh, good for Trump three times. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> no. Uh, Ballot allowed for that. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> okay, we're going to move into a discussion about the ad hoc task or presentation by Jessica Lewis on ad hoc task forces and work areas. They're gonna share the work plan and highlight the work areas for the committee members. And the recommended action is discussion. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, and, and also we talked about just revisiting the task forces because that's where we left off in November. Um, I did look into it and we are not able to have a a spreadsheet online that we all access. Uh, so, about that. yeah, unfortunately, anytime that a member is going to want to sign up for one of the areas, we'll have to do it here at the meeting so that it's okay. public. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I did hear back from Jeff mm -hmm. and and Lisa. 
That's why we're the only name. That's why you're the only name. But you'll see that you all come on, you guys. Exactly. <laughs> so I think, um, like Jeff, you yeah, said for an entire task force area, <laughs> which is it's fine. You know, this is still a work in progress. Yeah. Um, but I think. Oh, so that's why it populated so many uh, yeah. sections. Yeah, so I, I, I was looking at Jeff. I was like, I, just, I thought I was taking a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to like, do a... <laughs> um, well, and I, I do just want to talk about the task forces in general. Yeah, okay. Um, I've been thinking about them a lot, and I'm seeing them, and you can tell me if you see it differently. Um, but I think... It can be kind of approached from two different ways. If any number of you, any one of you has a like a project that you really want to tackle or see through, this can be a roadmap and some some help to get that project done. Or if you if you are feeling like you have some time to dedicate to the Art and Public Places Committee and you don't know where to start, it could also work that way because it, it does break things down into such small components. Um, I know at our last meeting, I think, I think we were even talking about whether or not we were going to go forward with the task forces, and we did decide to, but it, that was five, five, five months ago. ago. <laughs> yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are kind of some of the things I was thinking about them. I think they're still a really good tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do too. Um, I like what you did, Lisa. You signed up for like a, just a very small section of project development. Yes. Just as a, seems more doable. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what I was, and, we, and a lot of it is actually working on stuff that we've already have mm -hmm. and see where we can um, change. Like for instance, to conduct that audit of the current process, see what we can do to make some changes to our current policies mm -hmm. and update them. And um, I've done stuff like this before, so I don't think it, you know, it won't be something completely new to me, mm -hmm. and it will be something that I'll probably enjoy working on and, um, you know, making some progressive changes. So that's my hope. But we also got to see what those progressive changes need to be within the, our policies, procedures, rules, and regulations of what the city can do. So I'm assuming, too, that they have to go through the attorney has to do the final say and look at those. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, that's getting ahead of ourselves a little okay. bit. We'll just. <laughs> <laughs> do you want us to um, say what we would like? To yeah. Do? Yeah. If you didn't already, that would be great. OK, I'm thinking. Uh, uh, under this uh, green section here, partner and build stronger relationships with culturally diverse local and regional community organizations. Yes. Number one, I can do that. Compile a list of regional and local organizations. So that was J1. Um, I, is that right? I1. Okay. Okay. Got it. That's a great, a great one to start with. Thank you, Double. Okay. And I think it, like at this point, it can be as simple as just one piece. It doesn't have to be like the rest of I, for example. Right, right. Yeah, I'll start there. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we can, um, when we have stuff to report on this, there's still a place in our agenda for the meetings where we can talk about it. And that's okay. one or two down. Um, we can continue to do that in the future. I don't remember signing up, but I think I put a general sign up and got translated to this grid. But that's I feel like so, I'm sort of stuck on something that feels very um, not people centered. I think I think another way we can do this is we can all take these home and okay, yeah. you can email me. You're still able oh, to just email me. Okay, good. Yeah, and then at the next meeting, I'll have a revised chart with oh, what yes. everyone shows. Okay. And we don't helpful. have to. Oh, good. I right thought now. maybe you had to do everything like in I this said it day. that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's really helpful. Okay. Super okay. Helpful. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
Thank you for being here. Okay, that's super helpful. Yes. Okay, yeah, let's Everybody do that. Yeah, so we're not. Really be great. Okay. I agree with that because that'll give me some yeah, time to yeah. stick with these items that I can specifically say. I, I think my issue with the task force as they were talked about previously was was a little broad yeah. and we didn't always know what that meant, right. what that meant or yeah. how to be active mm -hmm. effectively. Yeah. I think we should all follow devil's lead. Choose <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing. Choose one thing. One thing is now. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because you're not trying to get this migrated over yet. You don't need this yeah. whole thing built out. Like, I mean, yeah. this is all just to support the program, yeah. and yeah. it can happen in small steps, and and probably more likely to happen if we okay. take off a little one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless there's like, I remember Jeff. I think you were talking about like an art walk, mm -hmm. and that would kind of be the other way to come at it if you had that project in mind, and then you could look to these and see if anything in here supports doing that. Right. Yeah. One of the things I was looking at is the uh, it's it's looking at like the um, overlap that happens with say community engagement and DEI yeah. and and some of the goals and and the, these uh, concepts or, or you know task forces. It almost seemed like there was um, duplication rather than integration of activity. So even thinking about art walk, it's like, well, what are we trying to accomplish here? It's more visibility for the public art that we have and its inclusion uh, for people in the community. So there is an access point. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why, as I was thinking about it, it's like, well, I just put some broad category, put my name on a couple of broad categories, and then it just populated it. <laughs> Which, um, I think you just with, signed up for all of community engagement. Yeah. And well, it's, it's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm interested in community engagement, but I'm also, I, I really want to be involved, if possible, with uh, project development. Yeah. But um, because I, I see a, an important part of the process being, well, how do you, how, how do you encourage and and um, make sure that you include a community engagement component as you're developing your projects. I see those as not being separate tracks. Mm -hmm. And that that's where I have trouble. It's like, okay, these are separate task forces, mm -hmm. but they somehow have to merge mm -hmm. at some point. So where are those connection points? You know, can, yeah. can we grow, you know, can we create Venn diagrams that show where these <laughs> right. things yeah. intersect? <laughs> I guess well, another yeah. question that might have been good to ask when we oh, had sure. our, our uh, community development folks here was about the community engagement staff. Um, one of the, mm. um, oh yeah, um, I know looking at specifically mm -hmm. section D under the community engagement task yeah. force. It says partner with community engagement staff. And so I would like to know more information about organizationally, how is that within, how is that kind of branched out between the cities? Right, yeah. and, and they actually, uh, they disassembled that office, right? Yeah. That office doesn't exist now. So is this still relevant? Community engagement is yeah. dis- but you know, this is something that um, Tara and Raisa and I had talked about quite a while ago. But if there's if there's something that exists, like community engagement, is within the city structure somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, wherever it might end up being. I think it's important for us to actually be connected to it. I I, I know that there was an attempt to. Uh, collaborate with the Com Office of Community Engagement in the past mm -hmm. that didn't, it didn't, I guess it didn't go anywhere really, but. We did, we did a couple. Maybe. We did one project that was pretty successful. Yeah, okay. But, but I think what you're saying, you know, is that the project development and anything we do should include community engagement at all right. times. It's mm -hmm. always through that lens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And does it make more sense to maybe come at it from a specific lens of project by project? 
Um, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's so much easier to think about when it's a tangible thing that we're working yeah. on. Yeah, because <laughs> that gives you concrete yeah. things right. to think right. about. So then maybe there's a, a rather than task forces, there's a, almost like a checklist. It's like, okay, we're developing a project. So let's make sure that there's a community engagement, a diversity and inclusion. Um, what's the what's the communication mm -hmm. to the community and the feedback back from the community on this project? And how how does that all flow? It seems like the, the clearest instance of that that I re can recall is the, the water bill mm -hmm. the project that was part of Kim's and Creatives. The what project? The, the the water bill where there were these um, oh they had yeah. a little QR CV, code yeah QR codes yeah on, oh yeah you know, the water I, I don't I didn't hear about that until it was realized mm -hmm. so it makes me wonder if you know how how this kind of, how project development is undertaken within the context of the committee as opposed to private mm -hmm. contractors who have more latitude to uh, you know uh, set aside the budget and mm -hmm. realize something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and when they're not behold to the same kind of rules and regulations that a committee would be in terms of. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I kind of, I feel like we question. could make some things happen, but I, I, I'm still not sure how they're, you know, how we get into gear with that. Yeah, that's a good question. Or like a specific project, you mean? Or. Sure. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I don't know, you know, just. How do we make a plan and execute it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a relatively new member of the committee, I'm wondering: has the committee initiated projects? Like, come up with, like, say, we want to create this art walk, or we want to create this sculpture somewhere, or we want to have, or is it more everyone? The ideas are coming to the committee from outside. I floated a few things, but ended up kind of pursuing them independently. Mm -hmm. But I also think the committee has come up with uh, concepts like, okay, we want to do, we want to support more temporary projects mm -hmm. rather than permanent projects. And we can actually have some impact on how the limited budget is, cool. is yeah. used. Yeah. So, so I think it, we've helped in the creation of opportunities, but Oftentimes. Yeah, creating a framework. So it's like, okay, we want to encourage these temporary projects. And so then a call for proposals can go out there. Mm -hmm. I feel like you guys were more generating that call, though. Yeah. Like they, maybe maybe for at, really a, did at a staff level. Yeah, right. I thought it was at a staff level. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Art, there was arts around, too. I mean, that was, I think, successful. That was yeah. really great. That was a collaboration with Creative Sonoma, um, but that wasn't driven by the committee. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. It's like, I know there's things, but I don't feel like I've ever seen them come through us. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and maybe that's a, a question for us. Are we really more of a review and approval committee, or are we actually supposed to be creating strategy mm -hmm. and, and project development? And, and maybe now that I say it, I'm, I'm a little unclear about that. <laughs> and I've been on this committee a little while now. <laughs> yeah, because from my experience over a year, it seems like ideas are coming in. We're saying mm -hmm. we're approving and, and getting the logistics down about mm -hmm. it, but we're not generating a project. Yeah, yeah. I think if we go back to the public art policy, it is more of a approval committee. Mm -hmm. And I think the task forces were born out of a desire to do more. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. The, the thing that I, I would be interested in seeing is us looking at where are the opportunities that we think with the collective expertise that we have on this committee? Where are the opportunities that we see for using public art effectively to uh, as an economic development to, uh, tool downtown in other neighborhoods, 
Uh, is there something that we would like to propose be a, a focus, let's say, for a period of time? Because we see either an opportunity or perhaps there's just a, an omission. It's like, oh, gee, you know, Coffee Park really needs more than one public artwork in the park. You know, so I, I think we could adv be advisors at a certain level, but at the end of the day, I, as I think about it, I, I think I joined this committee with the understanding that it's really more uh, a committee that is charged with review and approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that would make me want to not be on this committee. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, honestly, when I came on, I really, it was during COVID and it was all online. And I, I thought, oh, this is fantastic. I want to get involved. I'm new to the city. I am a working artist. I have a lot of experience with different things, but not necessarily 100% public art, but I have a lot to offer. And I don't feel like personally, I feel like in some ways, I feel like I kind of had to hold back, like, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be the one realizing that I can't get the contract. I can't, you know, and not like I was seeing it as a, monetary thing, but it's just almost like, can I even put forth my ideas? Like, it doesn't seem like there's room for it. So I'm really glad we're having this conversation because I feel like there's just a whole lot of collective talent and experience in this group. And that it'd be so much more invigorating if we could use some of it. Well, I think we are using it. Well, just, I'm just, but, yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> but I mean, you, but you I bring hear, a certain I mean, like set of skills that definitely always are being used. I feel like with your museum and institutional, and I feel like you really do help us kind of sort of put things in context sometimes. But I don't know, like this, just for me to tell that woman, I'd love to help her. That was mm. like the first time I felt like I ever even had that opportunity. Mm. So yeah, cool. which is very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, and I it's not about me. Room. I'm just saying. I'm just talking about the general. Yeah, I, I think there's room for the whole gamut. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. For, for the member that just wants to be approving stuff, to the member that wants to connect with. <laughs> so maybe yeah. this. I'm just brainstorming here, but maybe there could be some sort of a task on here somewhere. I don't know if there is that. You know, if like what you said, we suck somebody on the committee or several of us see uh, a need for, you know, more public art, maybe we could get on here of like one of the tasks being formulating ideas for projects mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what, yeah. where, where do we as people that are artists and art administrators, et cetera, whatever we are, I don't know, you know, where do we see there is a need in mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. for something and how can we yeah. make that happen? Yeah. happen? yeah. And I think that was part of the conversation about bringing art into the general plan, bringing public artwork into specific frameworks where there is already, you know, motion towards a specific plan or a general plan. I think that was a lot of the intent, uh, but that was focused on know a specific document that came that was produced so I don't think it was like a thinking out into the future of five ten years where do we see opportunities and how do we make partnerships it was more of how does how do we make sure public art is talked about in this in this document that is being adopted in the next year are there opportunities for you know artists to partner with whoever is creating the actual document so that it looks more visually pleasing or more engaging, that was an opportunity. I think I I would like to be, I know I would be invigorated by kind of like a task list of saying, this is where we see art happening and how the committee can support these ideas. That is what I think I would be more invigorated by. Mm -hmm. It feels like maybe the that last round of community grants is a is a bellwether for yeah. how the uh, economic development department is going to approach funding. I don't know where that. You mean going. the small business support program the, funding? What was that? What was that the last? Facade. Oh, was the, the facade the, improvement? No, not that one. The, the, the one projects? that's held up right now. It is that one. Yeah, oh, it is. facade oh. improvement. 
improvements um, is the small business. So there was a component that was facade improvements and there was a, a oh, okay. component that was placemaking. Gotcha. And that's where the public art program um, contracted with Art Start and the Mural Project to mm -hmm. do to bring murals to small businesses that wanted them. And that's are you thinking of arts thinking. around? No. No. No, I'm thinking of, the, I think it's a community development grant that funds the parade in South of A and oh. potentially, it was, you know, so like grants that went out, people yeah. applied to them maybe, what, four months ago, three months ago? Yeah, so that's the event support program and mm. community promotion grants are part of that. Because um, it's suspended, right? So, uh, <laughs> it is a bit in limbo, yeah. And I think it's because we've had more requests for funding than we have funding. Uh -huh. And so then how to distribute that equitably against, and, and on top of that is there's two, um, re two request periods in the year. Uh -huh. So we've already maxed out at the first request period. So I think we're just not sure what's gonna happen with the community promotions funding. And that didn't <laughs> fall on staff on you guys to me? Um, not happen? Bryce and I were in on the conversation, but it's really going to be with um, economic, economic development and Jill, I guess. Yeah. So they have a process for evaluating. They have some set of criteria or rubrics for evaluating the merit of different projects. In the past, um, Tara and Raphael actually okay. developed that, makes that criteria. Okay. But I think that criteria is also up for review at this point. Is, is this a potential area where we might make ourselves useful in terms of, you know, as a panel of people who have some expertise in cultural matters? And I think that's a good work? idea. I don't know. Yeah. That seems um, like, makes sense mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Like you, it's possible that we could suggest you as jury members uh -huh. for the, for the requests. I, I and that would them. be, that, that would be a great help to get a community member who's, you know, got expertise in cultural events and arts. And tie it across to yeah mm -hmm. yeah both ways um so are these kind of like this vein of conversation that we're having is this kind of in line with thinking about kind of processes within the cities uh, I, I i don't know that this is necessary it's not a public art program program got it so this oh, is where okay. things get really fuzzy yeah okay yeah. <laughs> so I think the best thing for this yeah. particular thing is to, for me to suggest, I'll suggest you, if you don't mind, be a jury member or anyone else who's interested. I, I think I have a conflict of interest because oh, of my right. involvement with OPAP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so, course. Yeah. But yeah. I think well, let's see. I'll just say yeah, ABC we, members are yeah, we interested. Can definitely find some yeah, and we can take yeah. it from there. Yeah. yeah. We could rotate. Yeah, but there's not a like a real overlay with this since it's not a public art program. Got you got it. It was just one of those things that fell to Tara in the past. Gotcha. Mm, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, that, that yeah. makes me think about like so, the, the flow charts that she had created. I know. <laughs> so, so is that what Gabe's referring to when he's talking about more you know, separation and, and focusing the this whoever you have? Hopefully you yeah. as the position of arts and cultural uh, culture manager. So they 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 would sort of insulate that position from taking on these extraneous projects. Yeah, I mean, it's not so extraneous. Well, yeah, that's fuzzy. I'm not sure. It's kind of what I was speaking to, like that whole idea of taking this person out of that conversation about how the money's going to be done is like. What? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's true. If you're if you're creating art or you're doing something that is um, impacting arts and culture in our community, then it is relevant. Yeah. 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 I have the impression they're going to make a decision about how they want to do that stuff, and we're going to. Yeah. Find out. <laughs> deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna, yeah they're not necessarily <laughs> looking for input. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have gotten some changes about how to um, go about some things. Yeah. Time, you know, gotcha. Yeah. Anyway. And if your position was brought in, there might be more bandwidth, but it sounds like they haven't decided that yet. It, it yeah. was going to be. Okay, so, can I ask you to expand on what you just said? 
Like, what um, are they asking you to do differently? Um, just like, uh, I mean, like there's, so like with um, uh, Live at Juilliard, right? Then when I came into it, then I made us, uh, I had two caveats um, that I uh, wanted to bring into it of, um, that I felt like would um, make it kind of protect it and make it special and make it useful within our community mm -hmm. um, in terms of being uh, people from Sonoma County that are playing it, uh -huh. as well as um, uh, original bands. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that those uh, those are um, well, Kurt, uh, well, is there a way to push back against that? Or is that I'm like, gonna, yeah, hey, uh, this is the way you're going to do it? I, I, it, was, it was like, there's not a local preference ordinance right. so we can't yeah. say mm -hmm. it needs to be a regional band yeah and yeah and then because, so not, yeah it's, it's a bit of a behemoth to yeah. push back on when yeah i mean it's possible yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but i don't know if that's why we have yeah. a local ordinance yeah, yeah. interesting because yeah. i think about like our criteria when we're putting out like a call for artists and we yeah. can prioritize artists within the bay area or northern mm -hmm. california yeah, but that's yeah. not a similar process. Well, well sort of that's RFP. part of a project plan and RFP, and we don't have that for Live at Juilliard. Right. Okay. And so maybe of, we yeah. could develop that. And it's just a bit of a different thing that, if like, you know, that I was able to come in and take work off of somebody's plate and, and bring in, you know, more than ten years of uh, professional experience with it and have a have that view. But that doesn't mean that I have. Um, uh, economic uh, development impact uh, experience that translates, you know, for um, new folks, you know, and so then, um, you know, uh, when we look at, well, why is the Windsor Town Green bigger, you know, um, then, uh, then those are, that's what they're going to want to, yeah, yeah, and so it's, and so, and it's probably not necessarily like everything's going to change, but it's just that you can't say no to those Right. People from right. that, you can make it apply. People. Anybody mm -hmm. can apply. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they. But we can't necessarily save that time of the two hundred and twenty people that apply, and then all these people are like from Arizona or something, and then they get vetoed. Yeah. Uh, or or that they're one of the yeah. But it's just mm -hmm. it's changing things and them you know getting into it and uh, wanting to try some stuff, and then we get to see how people respond. Having seen, having worked on uh, summer concert series in other communities, because mm -hmm. um, I co-produced a, a couple of them over you know in past years, mm -hmm. if you've got a municipality that actually has a budget that says you know we want to bring in, um, you know it may not be you know a top bill name act, but um, you know we want to bring some people in who you know people have heard them on the radio right. mm -hmm. and so it's going to bring in a larger audience it's going to be a bigger impact and if you have a mentality and there's a budget to support that mm -hmm. which yeah. which I, I had in a previous life uh, <laughs> for a short period of time and we were you know located between Philadelphia and New York and we were able to get touring groups mm -hmm. to play our series because they could make a stop yeah. Um, but, you know, that's a really different thing than saying, OK, we're going to only have talent from the county. Yeah. Well, and it's just uh, within my experience, it's just like what would make it useful within the budgetary confines that are there. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, not necessarily that look at it, but still wanting to keep it open. You know? yeah. yeah. And so, uh, you know, like definitely the big difference would be budget. Yeah. between mm -hmm. the, the, those two compared um, events. Yeah. But uh, but the budget, yeah. budget, that part has not been addressed, but then this other mm -hmm. thing has. Yeah, that's interesting. Yes. You kind of have to address them together to really make a well, valid something. decision, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just uh, yeah. I, I have another <laughs> question about no. um, what you said, uh, we're asking about earlier about this thing that the community community promotions community funding. thing and that funding. people have applied but it's not happening because it's just they just haven't heard back. Good well the application period doesn't close until the end of the month oh, oh okay oh, so, yeah. a long, oh okay oh i thought it had closed. Okay. your friends are with opath they mm -hmm. they accidentally applied at the previous oh, right. application okay. period yeah 
So, so, so it was it hasn't been like oh, okay. yeah, I thought it was like <laughs> yeah, it's 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 fine, fine. but now nothing is happening. Oh, that's, no, that's, that's not as good. Okay. For them, but they misunderstood what was coming. Yeah. Oh. So okay. they, yeah. that makes me feel a little better. Like yeah. okay. the application was from the beginning of February to the end of March. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes so, a little more sense. And there is still a lot of discussion going on there with that. So okay. yeah, just the, but the, I, you need for numbers and proof and and what does it generate? It seems like it's been an important grant for local organizations. It has, yeah. Um, I think we should get back to task forces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. It's all related, so all right. I okay. see how we went there. I want so thanks to, for the presentation of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to just say in our in our agendas, we always have a section for committee member reports. Right. So I think we should all. I think it would be helpful to take the task force as sort of like a leaping off point, but not caging us into what we can and can't do. So um, I, I, I forgot if it was Double or Kristen had an idea about something they wanted to, to bring up. Um, instead of necessarily adding it to the task force, let's just kind of go forth and bring it up during committee member reports. Okay. And and just start to go ahead with things instead of continuing to rework the task forces yeah. over and over. Right. Yeah, right. Right. let's just yeah, yeah. Whenever we want to have that discussion, let's do it during committee member reports. Okay, I love it. And make okay. it loose. Yeah, okay. loose now. Okay. 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 Is that a segue? Um, yes, we'll make the segue. Can okay. we? Yes, let's do let's it. Do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moving towards any um, public comment. <laughs> <laughs> we are required to ask that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> on my agenda. I don't. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, so now we are um, committee member reports. You're welcome to make any general comments or announcements. Oh wait, wait sorry. Oh, um, and project updates first. Oh, sorry. I yeah, turned we'll in. I thought you were yeah, tying that. Yes, program and project updates. Yeah, Go for yeah. it, Jessica. Mm -hmm. Is okay. To present. Um, well, actually, Bryce was going to present first with our program uh -huh. updates, and I realize now did ever have you have you met everyone? Uh, been introduced with Bryce? Mostly, but okay. I'm kind of part of a secondary or tertiary okay. way of directly. Um, so both of our contracts have been expanded, our scopes of work have been expanded, so I'm taking on more of what Tara was doing and Bryce is taking on more of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, he's going to talk about the program. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So um, relating to our rotating exhibits at the person senior wing, then there's still the uh, Santa Rosa Quilt Guild exhibition that's uh, going through March 27th. And then over at uh, Finley, then we have the National Arts Program. <laughs> Um, that's there through April 19th. Um, the reception is this Sunday from 3 to 5. Um, and uh, Council Member Victoria Fleming is going to be handing out awards. So then we've got uh, uh, levels of amateur, teen, um, youth, uh, intermediate, and professional. And so then uh, yeah, uh, first through third with all those and best in show and then education awards as well. We'll get that. Yeah. Um, and then for Live at Juilliard, the applications end uh, March 8th, then we're doing the selection process, and we're going to notify all the different uh, folks in April, and so then that is six dates, uh, they're all Sundays uh, from July 14th to August 1. And I want to give an update to everyone about Fire Station 5 public art. We had um, the finalists presented their proposals to the selection panel last month. And the public survey, or the public input survey is still open. It's going to be open through March 15th on the, so yeah, please take as many mm -hmm. postcards as you think you can hand out. How many can you mm -hmm. handle? Yeah. <laughs> I can, I'll take half of those. Okay. Um, the selection panel is going to meet at the end of March, and I'm not sure yet whether I'll have time to pull it together to present the recommendation to the APPC at that April meeting, or it might have to be the May meeting. And that's it, Chris. Thanks, Tara, or Dad, no, Jessica. <laughs> yeah. I'm so used to okay. Just Any like... questions, anyone? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Now we'll move on to the committee member reports. This is the, um, you can make general comments, announcements, ad hoc, ad hoc task force. We kind of started it, so we may um, not need to update. We may have some things that are still live. So, anyone want to make any? I just want to thank um, 
everybody who came to the museum the other day. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so great. Thank that you. was wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. They're all there, right? Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. All there. yeah. So. Bryce, sorry you Bryce, weren't part of that. But <laughs> we'll do it another oh, time. Oh, we did it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. museum tour sorry, and, and, uh, and a beer over at Flagship. It yes, was, it was great. It was a nice, yeah. nice event. <laughs> yes. Anyone else bring anything up? Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask Jessica um, if I want to invite our committee members to events, um, what is the best way to do that? I don't. Should yeah. I email you and then ask you to? No, um, you can go ahead and email everyone. Okay. If, it, if it's an event or a social thing, we can all. Because it wouldn't be. Topic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We just can't discuss business. work related. Yeah. Every business. Yeah. Our program stuff. Okay. Yeah. Great. But events are great to invite everyone to. <laughs> great. So I regularly coordinate events with the Shady Oak Barrel House, and I invite everyone to. Uh, if you are on social media, Instagram is a great way to keep up to date mm -hmm. on upcoming events. Uh, also, our website is regularly updated, um, but we have lots of, we have two shows this weekend, Friday and Saturday, uh, and um, local groups. Uh, we really highlight local performances and then performers throughout the Bay Area as well. So, and all of those shows are free to the public uh, to attend. So. I will keep you guys updated. Thanks, Kristen. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just going to float. I mean, I guess I'm trying out being more informal about community visits and stuff, sort yeah. of with an eye towards how we might formalize those things later on. But Anna introduced me to someone in my district who I thought was really interesting. There's a guy named Victor Temple who runs an organization called New World Ballet. Um, and he has a lot of people coming from the Bay and from the East Coast doing uh, as, as kind of guest residents. Um, and he's looking for a larger space to facilitate summer camps. Um, so I had an interesting conversation with him. Uh, and you know, I don't have anything tangible to offer him, but um, I, you know, I think what he's doing is really great and deserves you know, attention yeah. and resources. So I thought that was some, that's something that's sort of been in the back of my mind. Um, there's a woman named Danny D'Angelo who opened a uh, space called Strange Constellation. That's a kind of store, but, all, uh, but also does public events, like craft fair kind of stuff and uh, music events. Uh, and that seems like a dynamic and interesting space yeah. uh, that's been fun to visit. Where uh, is that? That's on South A Street. Uh -huh. yeah. um, and I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure when I when I first started, there seemed to be a real focus on people sort of presenting their projects at the end of each meeting, which didn't seem entirely productive to me. But I'm going to do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a know. kind of refresher. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I'm, you know, I've sort of for the last six years, I've kind of been organizing a space that's a kind of large uh, permaculture garden project with an emphasis on native flora um, that also hosts an exhibition program and occasional performances. Um, and that's going to be quite busy this year and with a, a real mix in terms of um, people's profiles, some of whom are coming from out of town and, you know, are you know, tend to do larger scale, higher profile kinds of exhibitions, but also local artists who either have uh, you know, maybe haven't had a lot of recognition or are just getting started. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of seeing, it seems like there's a place for programming that emphasizes that dynamic uh, exchange uh, locally. Uh, you know, especially since the tourism, and, you know, people are coming in and out of the county. And, uh, I grew up here in the arts, uh, you know, I, 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 I feel like we could all benefit from a, a larger variety of platforms mm -hmm. that are, you know, helping people develop their work and find community and uh, have, have have conversations. Um, so I guess I'll keep everyone. I, 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 in the past, I've always sent press releases to Tara mm -hmm. to forward to the committee, um, and I'll continue to do that. 
but, but I'm also, you know. I wonder if those could be sent directly to the committee. I don't know. Because it's a social limit type thing. Yeah. Same kind of thing as my question. Yeah. I'll find out. Okay. <laughs> but my it, thought is that it's okay to share. Okay. In a more informal way. And and in a way that parallels the gathering we had the other day, because we, I technically we can't talk about anything on the agenda, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But or the program. Or the program, right? But we can still talk about everything else in the right. world, right? <laughs> so, um, so that communication is yeah. it's just really being cautious um, mm -hmm. not to share information that is programmatic or agenda related. Yeah. Can I ask a question related to Victor, who um, the dancer um, and the one that has a ballet school? Can can we invite people to come and present to us as an informational just to raise awareness or is that not our function? But I'm just like, he's feeling outside the, yeah. the mm -hmm. conversation. But I, I went by his studio and you know, he was teaching a class and yeah, invited me to sit in. I think, me too. Oh, you did that too? I did that too. Oh, yeah. cool. No, yeah, great. I thought that was great. And he's really talented. He yeah. seems like he would be, I'm sure there are a number of people who would welcome that opportunity and I would, you know, someone would be happy. I think, so, Anne, are you saying he would come here? Well, possibly, or and then or just even in, just, but the idea to kind of develop a relationship, like invite people into more seeing us as being touch points for further tessellation out yeah. into the community. I Could think that's Victor come terrible. here? Is that is, or 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 even him being able to invite us there? Or mm -hmm. can that stuff happen? Is that is that like outside of who we are? Is it we could definitely go there socially. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have the same question about people coming to present here. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't um, know. let me look into it more. Because anytime someone's presented, it's been yeah, to address some place. Right. Yeah, for every class. And you would have to address something. Let me look into that further. I think that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. I would suggest so because this committee is really focused on art in public places. Right. Um, I, I'd actually be interested in people who want to address the group or have a question about uh, whether a particular location could have public art. You know, things, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that dialogue with the community, yeah. I think, would actually be beneficial. Right. Yeah. But uh, in this case, we're talking about a, a, a dancer, dance instructor, dance choreographer. Who is dance a, non, a nonprofit. Uh, right. So is this the right committee? Yes, I, exactly. Yeah, I, I might. Well, I mean, is is there an arts and culture committee in general? I guess yeah, I do, do really not. I, part of the reason yeah. I thought his <laughs> case was especially relevant is that he runs a festival in the summer that involves very high profile uh, studios mm. from back east, and he's looking for a venue mm. that his mm. space is insufficient for that. It's a public event, mm. it sounds like to me, and he's so, looking f for a place to do that. Yeah, so okay. Like that. Yeah. And my sense is that there are quite a few people who are kind of siloed mm -hmm. in that way mm -hmm. in the region who, you know, could really do a lot with uh, a, a bigger platform or potentially mm -hmm. a, a public mm -hmm. platform. Um, but I think I do think um, people who have concrete requests or are looking, you know, for some support or facilitation. Um, are going to expose the limitations of the kind of resources that we are capable of providing right. very quickly. Exactly. And if we're inviting people in, then you know that could get awkward. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly yeah. my point. Yeah. Would it be more productive for him to meet others who are in the performance community and and you know? Well, I think he already does. He's got a relationship with Tara, mm -hmm. and he's definitely. She's helped him. She was instrumental in him moving from Ukiah down here. Okay. Um, and involved with that. And he has, I think he has pretty much exhausted the other people. There isn't much going on um, in dance mm -hmm. like he's proposing and the kind of talent he's bringing in yeah. um, for his events. He did one at Christmas. He does, he's training, he's setting up another one right now. Did he send you that document? Mm -hmm. Which is, so they're often short. He rented Loser Burbank for the last thing because he had to find a venue for one night and mm -hmm. almost sold it out. 
So and he, like, he needs like like twelve hundred seats. Yes, he more needs workspace. He needs high ceilings and big space to conduct classes. Five to six thousand square feet. Yeah, I think and I feel like he goes as challenged about performance. It's the planning and the, it is difficult. But he brought the mayor in too. And that's how I got involved because mm -hmm. she brought me in and then I talked to Nathan and you know, Nathan's had his own conversation. But he touches in with me, but I feel like I kind of hands are tied. But it's like, and that's what the mayor said Is this committee only about visual art on buildings or do you no. do any kind of yeah, I would like to push against that. That's, yeah. that's yeah. what she said. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I said. I 100% agree. Well, yeah. I mean, if a Juilliard yeah. Park is, is the, if that's a. But that's not part of us, really, yeah. isn't no. it? It's not. The live at Juilliard. No, that, is, that is part yeah. of us. Yeah, what's not is like community promotions. Mm -hmm. Okay, but isn't Juilliard Park, that's, I thought, but it's not for part of the Art and Public Places Committee. Necessarily. Well, it's a program of the public art program. Yeah, but, but it's no, not where yeah. we but get to. But we have no jurisdiction. Yeah, no jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's, I mean, I think it's just kind of letting you guys know. Yeah. But mm, yeah. there hasn't necessarily been the okay. come on down and participate. Yeah. But I remember a couple of years ago when the Mary Lou um, dedication event happened and with the Lowrider Council, and I think about Lowrider cars as being art on wheels and it's in the public. So that's that sounds art. like public yeah. art to me. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so we, it, that and some other uh, events have prompted that discussion. And, and maybe that's something for us to really consider is what the mm -hmm. overall scope of this committee actually is. I mm -hmm. sort of like the idea of being a bit more expansive and yeah. progressive mm -hmm. in our thinking. Yeah. I, I, I hope I'm not belaboring this conversation too much, but I uh, just out of curiosity, uh, a few years ago, I. Uh, got in touch with a film name, filmmaker named Courtney Stevens, who was interested in um, making a 16 millimeter film. She does kind of archi architectural history, his histories um, mm -hmm. uh, in a short form film format. And she was thinking about doing a 16 millimeter film about the Santa Rosa City Hall, um, which I thought might be an interesting yeah. connection with the, uh, this it's was during the time of the, the, the new plan was being written. Um, and she just got a Guggenheim and stuff, you know, she's someone who's whatever recognized, um, but also, yeah, a very interesting artist. Um, uh, but I wasn't sure where to, I mentioned it a couple times, but it didn't really go anywhere. Um, but I do wonder about the possibility of projects like that that have um, a very clear relationship to tourism and economic development in terms of raising the profile of you know certain cultural sectors or artifacts or buildings that are in the county um, uh, so yeah I don't know, just yeah. trying that on again yeah I love it. Mm. well i think it's great for all of the committee members to develop these grow these relationships and mm -hmm. and for the appc to be accessible yeah. to the public and um yeah, and, and ask for participation and something that you're interested in yeah. In terms of like what we can and can't do, I think where we we have to go back to the public art policy, which is on the public art website, mm -hmm. and it's somewhat vague. So, like, I think we can interpret that, or we can work on interpreting that together. But that's our document that tells us what okay. we can and can't do. Okay, is the public art policy? Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, and it's after five. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say that, um, oh. been, like, well, I just wanted to make a quick announcement too, just really quick, because I know everybody. So I'm with the Santa Rosa Junior College Music Department, and I just want everybody to know that they have multiple events all year long or all semester long that are going on. And next week on Wednesday, we'll have the chorus and chamber singer singers, and they have special art, um, artists. And then on Thursday, the jazz band um, that's um, going to be performing, and they have some special artists, and um, including its students and faculty. And then on Friday, the orchestra of next week is going to be. And if you want any more information, you can just go on the Santa Rosa JC um, Music Department website and um, look at the events. Just click on the events. Thanks. Yes. Great. 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 Great.
Um, is there anything else you had on your agenda, like department reports, things you wanted to do? Um, yeah, I just want to tell everyone that I made a mistake. Um, and so the mayor is going to re-elect the APPC chair at the council meeting. That's going to happen on March 26th. And then the APPC will elect the vice chair at the following meeting. Oh, okay. Um, so sorry about that. Okay. It's a little bit late. So for that the always year. happens. Just like Deborah has a been here through that there's yes that so um we, so the mayor always elects the vice chair and that's going to happen no the real chair oh sorry yeah 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 and then abbc elects the vice chair right okay. and um crystal's actually going to write up a like a process for that because we haven't we don't have one written up actually thanks for yeah yes. okay so thank just you want to let y'all know so we're just pushing that off um we were talking about it maybe okay. happening yeah yeah, sure. oh. yeah we have to wait that until is. the chair has been elected okay excellent cool okay so <laughs> can you remind us the date for uh march 26th the mayor will okay. elect the chair great then at the city council meeting at the city council yeah okay and normally that would have taken place earlier in the year oh interesting yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, for the last agenda I have is the future agenda. Does anyone want to put anything down? You can see there that there's the ongoing list of what we have already added. It's on your agenda. Um, anyone want to add anything for future discussion? Okay. I will take that. And then the next meeting will be Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day. And um, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Great That's team. not a Great holiday. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because the 31st is Cesar Chavez uh, oh, that day. That, yeah, that day is going to be canceled. For oh, all. oh, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. April 1st is, at, but you're right, Cesar Chavez Day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. So you'll get a kid there. Is that people will be bumping to May? Yes. Okay. Well, all right. Mark your calendar for the <laughs> first Monday of May. Or if Unless you if, need unless us to do meet. a special meeting. We could do a yeah. special meeting. In okay. April. Yeah. Let me know if you want. Yeah. And we'll also. Okay. okay. If anyone's interested in that, let's talk. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for hanging with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good job, people. Keep oh, going. Okay. <laughs>